It's time for the Chips and Salsa Show. The only show about Latinos for Latinos. And did we mention Latinos? It's the Latissima. Latinos come in all flavors, shapes, and sizes. You don't have to be Latino to enjoy Chips and Salsa. Super low, Chips and Salsa. What is up, everybody? Zeke Rodriguez here with the Chips and Salsa Show, New Mexico. And as always, Alice Lara, what is up? Hola. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. It's been pretty wild. It's always wild. I come on the show and we talk and we think and it's like, wow, every day life gets crazier. And, uh, you know, we're going to go and say everything like we always do. We'll go, you know, geopolitical, we'll go global, we'll go national, we'll go local. But on a personal thing, everybody's freaking dying right now. <laughs> it's like I've had se- several friends just suddenly die. Uh, someone, a close friend of me. You still mine. Okay. I'm good. Still I'm good. good. Um, I smoke cigarettes every once in a while, but I still work out. I feel all right. I feel good. <laughs> this man is in great shape. So I feel great. Just keep it up. Whatever you're doing, man, keep it up for sure. I feel great. Actually, I was talking to some friends that were in town, and you know, I was like, man, I don't even feel like I'm 40. I feel better than I did when I was 18 because I wasn't doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not doing all kinds of crazy stuff like I was then. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what? Somebody else turned 40 very recently. Oh, yeah? Who that? Who's also in very good shape. Our own oh, engineer. It was your birthday? Joey Garza. What day? Uh, the 7th. September 7th. Yeah. Shout out to Joey Garza. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. And then he's got the baby on the way coming up with Haley here pretty quick as well. She's in the studio. So yeah. So we got days of birth here. That's good. That's we positive. we got to celebrate life. <laughs> <laughs> we got some alive folks out here. Any, you feel any different? I mean, you know. It's a big step. 40's 40, tough. But you're a whippersnapper still, dude. I'm all right. I'll be all right. <laughs> Genetics are, are crazy because I got more grades than he does. Yeah. And I'm younger. And yeah. you're, yeah, you're 39. I'm 39. You're <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to say how old I am. You don't got to. It's okay. What you? We love you. 22. <laughs> Going on 23. 22 yeah. plus. Yeah. Hey, I like that. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we don't have a guest today, so I apologize for that. Uh, we are still in the process. We're trying to get as many... Uh, candidates as possible so they're invited if you happen to be watching this particular broadcast podcast and you say hey I'm, I'm running for office in New Mexico uh, I'd like to be on your show please contact us yeah and we'd love to have you there's on. a lot going on and on a note of that we actually have a CCC meeting oh, with the Republican tonight? Party tonight at La Posta and those are big deals guys we really want to get I'm gonna be doing a better job I got authority to start promoting coming to the Republican meetings here locally we need to get we need to get some new blood out there, guys. It's tough. I mean, nothing, no, nothing against the the, the, the age doesn't even matter. It's just like it, no, the, we have to renew. Well, the Republican Party is new blood. now. You're right. It's no longer like what it used to be. It's almost unrecognizable. The the MAGA Republicans are pretty much like what the mid '90s Democrats were, like the working class, the middle class. Like they left, they left the middle class. The Democrats left those guys a long time ago. So now they joined the Republican Party. So it looks totally different. It's younger. It's more uh, racially diverse. Uh, just spiritually diverse and I just don't see that fully reflected here in Doniana quite yet but it seems like it's going there but you'll see me do more efforts to get more of you guys freaking out there and that's so important because you're so right and every day I mean things pop up the videos pop up and uh, people of color okay minorities are like no we're not tired we're you know not with the Democrat party anymore that in fact uh, just like I think RFK said it and a lot of people have said it too the Democrat, the party has left us. The Democrat Party has left them, and in, right. within the Republican Party, I mean, we've always had our certain you know, things. We're pro life and pro God. Those things are. That's very kind of a newer to thing us. too, though. No, we've, we've. If you look, if you look in uh, the platform, you was, see that because Reagan remember, pro-life? remember, yeah, as much as he could be, right? As much as he could be, because that was pretty close to the 1973 Roe Back versus in the day, Wade. Also. Absolutely, but no, so. You know, you just you just got to keep keep on going, and it's so important. And that's why I love doing the show with the millennial. I'm the boomer; he's the millennial, because you have the better chance of attracting people. What's after you? The Gen? What is it? Gen, Gen Z. Z. Gen Z. Gen Z, I believe. Yeah. Even Gen Z is kind of waking up. You'll the see male, the men, the men. Gen Z males are like freaking kicking ass right now. They're super conservative, but there's a discrepancy because the Gen Z girls are going the opposite way. They're going more liberal, so. That's pretty much going to speak to the fact that... Is that abortion? Ain't nobody going to... No, it's just, a, you know, women are just more suggestive. You know, that's just a psychological truth. We are more emotional. I'll more admit emotional, to that. more suggestive. And so with the programming, all the propaganda out there, they're a little bit more... And then, they're, and then the college, you know, most, more girls are in college now than ever, more than men. So they're getting indoctrinated, you that's can argue as point. well. So their indoctrination is a little more intense with the females. 
But so, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. How do we change that? Because, you know, you're closer to that age, and you're out there, out and about. Um, The nice thing is, when you're younger, they'll be more open to talking to you than, you know, their mom and dads and grandpas and stuff, you know. How do you open a conversation like that? That's one thing. Charlie Kirk, he's so good. He's out there on the campuses all the time, and he's, he's polite and challenging people, and they love, they love to try to get them, but I have never seen. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I've, no. The big one with the gals is like, and it's 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 the whole like the whole Democrat platform right now is like, you know, I want a woman's right to choose. It's all about a woman's right to choose, and like the girl, the college girls, like it's a woman's choice. You know, it's like the whole abortion thing. That's like the main argument. And that's how they get most of these girls right now. So that's a that's a tough conversation because people just don't understand that the abortion clinics are way more than just you know w- helping women's rights. We've been over this like not ad nauseum at this point. Well, let's go over it again. Well, we haven't, and, and I'd like to take this opportunity. Because we made national news. I was watching Newsmax. Did you know? And the little cry line Las Cruces did. Oh, man, uh, that's right. And it talked about the abortion facility that's going to be built up here in our town. And, of course, they call it reproductive health. <laughs> but basically, it's going to do abortions. Now, they are touting also that it does other women's services. But I want to talk about it, especially because uh, 40 Days for Life, Southwest Coalition, what they're doing is they're really hardcore focusing on getting people to pray during their 40 Days for Life campaign, yeah. which starts like September 23rd. And uh, you can go to Southwest. I think it's southwest.life is the website. And Great you can organization. sign up for a shift. Great. You know, my, my sister-in-law and I do it every, they have two a year. And what you basically do is you're a prayer warrior. So you go in front of the site. You're on the sidewalk. Of course, you can't be on their property. And right now, there's nothing there. Right now, it's just, you know, an empty lot. Ten million dollars, state of New Mexico is gonna has donated to that, and and you pray, you don't engage. Someone comes up, like we have this guy that used to come up, and he starts yelling, "Abortion! God loves abortion!" And it's the creepiest people, you know, too. and it's 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 crazy. But you know what's interesting? And if I've said this before, I'm sorry, but it's such a good story. So we have. Have you seen those um, wooden crosses that the Knights of Columbus creates? You know, pray for the unborn. Yeah. So the last two times we took our crosses, and we didn't get the finger. They hate it. We didn't get the guy come yelling at us. We got more thumbs ups, and you know, hey. it, it was really, it was really cool. But I want, just want to encourage you if you're watching. It's not too late. You can sign up. There's, they're going to emphasize that location, which is up on, uh, what is that, Loman? Um, it's a little. They changed the location. It was like right across from the hospital, and I'll, I'll have that for you. We'll, we'll put it in our notes and stuff. Then they're also going to do the pink house. And the one in Santa Teresa. So they broke ground across the street from Memorial, or they're about uh, to break. Not ground. Memorial, but closer to the um, Mountain View. Mountain View. Oh, Mountain yeah. View area. And I, sh- I, I probably have the address. I can get that before the end of the show. So my analogy, everybody knows I'm pretty freaking pro-life, and that's because I know what's really going on with those abortion clinics. And like, it's not what they what you think it is. It's not what I. My analogy is, if you guys seen Ghostbusters one, when they got that chamber when they're storing all the freaking souls. And then that asshole freaking lets them all out, right? Well, we're going to have a nuclear reactor of freaking evil here if we don't wake people up to what's really going on in these places. And, you know, Michelle Grisham was over there, giddy with joy, you know, taking the pictures, you know, breaking ground over there. Oh, let me just interject too. So I get a text that morning, right, and say, hey, if you want to go down there, they're going to do the ribbon cutting at 1.30, so we'd like to have people down there in protest. And what did they do? They did it at 10.30. They did it early. Hmm. Gee, that was interesting. Yeah. But they didn't let the press know. Of course, we don't have a lot of press out here in media, too. But. Well, you know, it's just something. I don't think it's going to be able to. That, it's going to be that easy for them because once people learn about what's really going on over there, it's uh, they're just looking at it like uh, medical tourism. So they want it right here in Las Cruces so people can fly into El Paso. People from El Paso can come right over here and get it done. And I think already right now, New Mexico is like the number one destination for, for abortions. You know, it's pretty I wild. wouldn't doubt it because then we also have, you know, some of Arizona, because mm-hmm. Arizona isn't like us, no limits. Yeah. And then Juarez, like Mayra Rodriguez was telling us about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really awful. And 10 million is nothing, guys. They, they make like a half mil per fetus, you know. So they're going to quadruple, quintuple their profits real quick here. They're going to be making a lot, a lot of money. Okay, I just wanted to get this. But that's the issue with the young ladies. And but beyond that, there's really no issue. I don't see why they're so they're going so left. I mean, it's a feminism thing. And I saw something yesterday. Like there's an attack on men. You know, they're just like testosterone's a problem. We need we need women in leadership. And it's like, look, women are already pretty much in charge. <laughs> women are the main voting block in America. 
You know what I mean? There's more women in college now than now, ever. Now, is that true? Do do uh, women vote more though, or men? Still yeah, vote women are the primary votes? voting block, for sure. There's a higher percentage of mm -hmm. women that vote than oh, men. Oh yeah, massive. That surprises me. Yeah. And I'm embarrassed to not know that. No, no, it's massive. Um, like the most, the majority of the liberal voters is like women between the ages of like 30 and 50. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a big voting block. But but yeah, women are the majority voter. You know, that's you got a piece of the you got a piece of women. And aside from that, even if they're married, they control eighty percent of the household financial decisions too. So women already run things, guys. That I believe. So I just <laughs> want to mention so that you it's the UNM Health Sciences Center. Now, see, isn't that a nice sounding name? How could you say? Oh, that's not. They're abortion. good at names. UNM, you know, University of New Mexico Health Science Center. So the abortion facility is at. 4471 East Loman. Stopping dimes over here. East Loman. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to go there and, and uh, pray and sign up, like I say, and see, I'm right here on the site. It's really easy. You can just go on there. You look for a day, look for an hour shift, throw your name in there. And if not, if you want to call and talk to somebody, you know, I can get you Marcy's phone number. And uh, Marcy is like the Las Cruces coordinator. And uh, she can take care of that for you as well. I just did it this morning. The crazy thing is you got like 30 different forms of freaking birth control these days. <laughs> plus condoms, plus abstinence. It's like, what are you doing, man? You know, there's, there's other ways you can go about doing that if you don't want to have any kids. Like, you can I be, don't get that either. You know? <laughs> now, okay, so Haley's the youngest gal here. Uh, when, <laughs> when, I hate to put you on the spot. And she's pregnant. Yay! She is pregnant. Yay. We love that. Any ideas on that because like when i was growing back in my old days you know we were still like it was kind of hush hush you knew about the pill and things like that but right. it wasn't like today i mean there i just saw an advertisement for the uh, plan b pill and the young girls were like oh i'm fine tonight because i've got my plan b i'm like wow that destroys their body what you have any thoughts on that Haley? i mean it's out there it's, i think that if you are trained to know like your parents tell you about abstinence or your cycles um, exactly you just gotta learn but it, it has been out there <laughs> i was on the pill at a young age just oh really it also helps hormone it also helps right. your product, productive system like it helps a lot just not because you're having sex you get regular and you weren't affected you were able to get pregnant and and because sometimes they'll they'll i've heard people that get on young and then it might help might hurt them later in the pregnancy but you did it no problem when you guys are ready which is cool do it when you're ready. If you got to do some birth control, the whole thing's over till you get more stable. You get in a place where you have kids. Hey, that's what I was all about all until I was, you know, in my late twenties, and I had a, I had a kid. And you were healthy now. And they also showed in high school, like we saw this horrible, awful film, and it talked about STDs. Oh and yeah. If that didn't scare the hell out of you. You know, like okay, I think I may just you know be a little bit more selective. Did they ever show that? Yeah, fear and shame are great. Did they show that to you oh, in high school? Yeah. Did you guys really? Yeah. No, I didn't get to show that. Well, I. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my family members was uh, in the medical profession. He was uh, working for the Department of Health, and they would go to Juarez and examine the prostitutes over there and give them, like, health updates and just, you know, help them out as much as they could, right, for free. And so he had this access to this awesome book of all the STDs and all their manifestations, wow. you know, and how they would, you know, get worse. And, boy, did that help me <laughs> not get a girl pregnant and not, like, be crazy. And I handed him out. He gave me a whole stack, and I handed him out in school. If anybody's listening and remembers that, shout out to you. But uh, I remember a teacher got a hold of one of them, and they got so pissed off, and they took them off for me, and they reported me, and I got in trouble. They reported you? Yeah. For doing that? Yeah, I don't know why. I would report. Oh, he's trying to help people. Like, but it was and pretty it was, nasty. It was all factual material. Hardcore, it was like a textbook. Syphilis, it sounds like. gonorrhea, maxed out. Like, if you ever see that, you'd think twice about who you'd be sleeping with. For now, see, sure. that should be mandatory reading. <laughs> It's nasty. Or at least, okay, if you want to say, okay, my son, daughter, I don't want them to read that, fine. But I would want them to get as much education. Why wouldn't they? They probably don't. I bet they don't. I, I would let I would let my kids see that. Absolutely. I have no problem with them. So yeah, take a look at it. That's what you're dealing with right there. That's like along the lines too. I, I don't even think they have driver ed in school anymore. But they had a, a film like it was called Blood or Death on the Highway, something like that, and it would show you know kids oh irresponsible driving and the horrible accidents that, that could happen works. and death. But I mean you know yeah you, you can call it scare tactics whatever but it does it happen. freaking works they made us in the military in boot camp I mean, you like have to sleep around two hours of, you're on two hours of sleep but if they catch you sleeping in the like it's a film room they have they catch you sleeping your ass is in trouble so they make you sit there have a sleep you're basically getting brainwashed to be honest with you guys but you're watching DUI accidents like the worst gnarliest ones where they get like fully burned they got like one eye left and they show their whole story they show the whole thing while they're in the hospital coming back from it it's just so ever since then i've i've been mr uber for a long time Good. mr taxi for a long time because that, that's just seared in my brain like man i don't want to i don't want to be doing that to anybody you know 
Well, and, and that's how it should be. Um, unfortunately, my husband's nephew, he was killed by a drunk driver. Random, right? Yeah. In Phoenix, Tempe. He, was, he happened to be driving home. And the guy came out of nowhere. It was 35 miles per hour there. And the dude was doing 65 or something. Bam. And uh, it's a horrible thing. And ironically, and I'm going to talk about this because it's, it's still very serious. There are still people no, that don't take it serious enough. And it happened that the next day, a friend of mine, I was, it was a political thing I was calling him. And he said, oh, Alice, he goes, it's so awful. Last night I was coming home. He lived within the same area. And he saw our nephew just laying there. So Damn. I don't know if he was alive at that point or not. Oh, no. But he said it was so awful. Um, the paramedics at that point were all around him. He goes, I couldn't sleep all night. Yeah. Well, and he had just, you know, he had been driving by. How could you? But so, you know, it, it's, this is all serious. And, and it's, I think our culture just does not, uh, life is precious and we just don't value it enough. Yeah, it's just real. This is all very real. I mean, we've got some pretty crazy news to share here later on, but what we got to do then, it sounds like, is we got to make our own video of STDs and their full manifest manifestations. You still have that book? <laughs> I'll find it. I'll get something. <laughs> and then we got to make a video of DUIs and how horrible they are. And then we got to make a video of the abortion clinics and what's really going on there. That, that would, would, be solve, that would help society. Public service announcement, right? Yeah. Chips and Salsa Show public service announcements That's the with Zeke and Alice. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do, we'll do a sick one like, uh, like Sound of Freedom. We'll have Angel Productions do it. We'll make a whole big old story out of it. I do want it, you know, on a personal level, I, I told you that I lost a good friend from Phoenix who was our neighbor when we first moved into our neighborhood in 2003. Right. And he was the first guy that came over to talk to us. But Dave Gillis, who um, he passed away this weekend, and it's very sad. He's probably, I don't know, maybe early 70s. And just a wonderful guy, good Republican. And... Uh, we're going to miss him. And so, Dave, I just want to, I just want to, anybody that knew him, because a lot of people, I had to call a few people this weekend, and I just want to say I'm, I'm so sorry for your family and your friends, and I'm going to miss you. A uh, good a dog person, too, and just loved life, and good to everybody. Good to everyone and everybody, and had the biggest heart in the world. So, Dave, salute. Rest in peace, buddy. Celebrate. We'll celebrate his life. You know, uh, 70's great. I, I'd be cool with 70. because Don't make any plans, that dude. Was, that was royalty back in the day. You ain't getting to 70 unless you're like way up there. You know, yeah. the, the death rate was like 50 to 60 for a very long time. And back in the day, I learned this recently too. Women were dying way before their husbands because women would, they were like the slaves of the family basically. You're doing mm. all the farming, all the hardcore labor. There wasn't no dishwashers. So women used to, would die way earlier than the husband a, long, you know, a while back. And that, that's interesting to know. And childbirth, like it was very and childbirth common. too. That's uh, not easy on the body. My grandma's age, you know, they would lose a few babies. Not all the babies yeah. made it. You know, my That's mom, right. my mom, her name is was Carmen, and she talked about uh, the first Carmen. So right before her, a baby had passed away. So when she was born, then they named her Carmen. So she was the second Carmen, I guess. They used to do stuff like that. And that wasn't well. Let's see, my mother was born nineteen twenty. 1920. So on the note of your friend passing, you know, um, there is more death now than ever before. Ever in recorded history, there's more people dying than there is people being born right now. It's, uh, Especially it's, in the United States. It's just yeah, worldwide. You know? Worldwide there is too. And so I had a, I had a friend of mine, um, a really good friend of mine, Christy Cogdale. She passed away on Monday. Her funeral is going to be September 20th at Getz Funeral Home at 3 o'clock. I will be there. And yeah, shout out to you, Christy. Prayers to you and your family. And yeah, just want to at least give her some, some type of condolences because she was a really good friend of mine. I've known her for a long time. And I was oh. close with her and her, her, her brother and her sister and her mom and her dad. How old good was people. she? She was 39. She was my age. She was your age. Same, same age. We went to high school together, yeah. That is so young. And, and she, had, she passed away? She passed away. Won't say. They won't say. Oh, okay. They no, won't say. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Oh. I'll find out. But when I do, you know, I'll find out. I imagine That's so young. it's something with, to do with, it could be drugs. It could be suddenly. You know how that is. Uh, I lean more towards the suddenly on pretty much everything now. <laughs> You're right. Because you know? I had another friend that's in town right now for his dad who uh, had, a random, had a random stroke, random heart attack. And, uh, you know, he, they flew him out here to El Paso over the weekend, and he's doing okay now. But he barely made it, but he's going to be all right. Wow. So a lot, of, a lot of people in the hospital, a lot of people dying. It's a crazy time to be alive. Because yeah, I knew about uh, more people dying this year than ever before. But when you're actually sitting here and, like, looking at your friends and your family and people that you know that you grew up with, it's, it's like, super surreal. You know, it is a uh, man, but that's why it is important to celebrate life. And even, you know, nowadays 
70 seems, of course, as you get closer to that age, it seems, it doesn't seem that old to you. But there are, are a lot of people that are well into their 90s. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, too, is, you know, check out your health. Talk to your doctor about some supplements. You know, when you do your labs, you might be low on something. It doesn't always have to be a drug. And, and what always aggravates me so much, I don't watch, I, I watch TV, but most of the programs I watch, they're recorded so I can just flip through the commercials. But whenever I have to watch the commercials, I swear every day they come out with a new drug. And halfway through the commercial, you don't even know what it's for. You know, it's some kind of zeka bala bala or whatever. I'm like, well, what is it for? I have to wind it back and say, oh yeah, that's for asthma. But you could have a heart attack and chronic diarrhea, but, you know, hey, your asthma will be gone. Yeah, we're the most unhealthy country in the world right now. Americans are super unhealthy. I mean, we have, our medical bills are through the roof. Everybody's, you know, for the most part, obese. And, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, crony capitalism. You know, basically, they're just exploiting our uh, insatiable desire for instant gratification in the food that we eat. You know, the cigarette companies own the, the processed food companies, so they're just as toxic as cigarettes, processed food is. But you know what? Um, that's part of us being conservative, really. That's what got me into it. The, my first red pill was like how corrupt the medical system was. And we can go on big tangents on that. Well, and we can take a turn here, too, because, you know, we don't want to be like super, super negative. But RFK Jr., who's recently joined forces Love him. with Trump 2024, Love RFK Jr. Um, it's very cool because he's talking about all of this stuff. Bad. And he, he's going to be like the ambassador of health, I think. He's what is awesome. it? Make make America healthy again? Maha? Make, yeah, that's his thing. Maha, that's his thing. <laughs> and and that's the you know I really want to talk about this too. Is that uh, this is super freaking cool? I love this. I love this. And this is cool because we just had Yvette Harrell on the other day, and that's who got me into politics. I was sitting next to her in 2018 when they stopped the count, and in the middle of the night, 4,000 ballots came in. All Democrat, not date, not time step, came in, and then she lost the race. Okay. That was historic, and that didn't – I don't even think that got national attention. Nothing happened. I heard about it because I had family here. She just lost. And they were like, okay, you want to sue? Well, then you can't run in the next election. It's going to take about four or five years to get, get a shot. So she, they told her she couldn't yeah. run if she sued? Yeah, yeah. Who made that until, rule up? Until, until the court case is done, so they're like, we'll drag it out uh. until – so she's like, I'll just run again and win. And she did. She ran again, and she freaking won. On that note, on that note, just last – I think it was two weeks ago. Texas, uh, Governor Abbott and Ken Paxton, their attorney general, has special election integrity task force teams, and they raided a plethora, shot the three amigos, of senator, state senators and state representative offices where they were actually registering illegal voters and, procure, and, and doing all kinds of election uh, fraud. They raided their freaking office. They're doing their own office. And, and, they, and they wiped out over a million. It's like 1.2 million. One million, yeah. Yeah, over a million uh, People that were dead on the dead voter rolls, people who moved, uh, just people who were not able, shouldn't be voting, they removed them. And that is, and it's going all over the country right now, in Nevada, all over the place. So God bless Texas. Can you imagine what they would do <laughs> if they did that here in New Mexico? They're for damn sure doing that stuff around here. Come on now. And it's so easy. I mean, because if, if you come illegally into this country, you can get a driver's license, right? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you can do, which I don't understand how you can have actually a little bit more of a right than someone who is here legally and trying to do all the correct things. It's, it's, not, it's not right. So I love that. We can now show, you know, our county clerk or you're, wherever you're at, you can show, like, look at what they did in Texas. They're raiding these people. What are you guys doing to try to at least remedy it? And then recently, so they're, we're doing great right now on a lot of things. The House Republicans had put a bill because they're, they're about to go into furlough to fund, fund the government. They're about to go into furlough if they don't, like, figure, oh. figure out how they're going to pay the government by March 2025. Well, the Republicans said, okay, we'll fund all your stuff. But in this same bill, you've got to verify that you're an American citizen to vote in the next election. Ah, they're putting that they're limit put, on They're putting it on They it. really are. Yeah, so they, they're not going to fund any of their bills or anything for next year unless they make it. So this year, you've got to verify that you're a U.S. citizen to vote. I love it. And then, as you know, I think uh, Washington, D.C., there's some other cities, municipalities. Uh -huh. It's okay if you're illegal. You can vote in the local elections. How is that okay? I don't know, but... But they have made it. All right. Are they going to eliminate that as well? Do you know? Or is it, that's just a How federal? American, no, no, that's a federal. That's a federal. That's federal. That would make it okay. federal. So everyone has to abide by that. There's mm -hmm. no way out of that. And, and uh, remember, we just had, we were just interviewing uh, Joan Scherer with Election Integrity from yep. CCIA. I got mm -hmm. my shirt on. Talked to her yesterday. And she was saying, which I had totally forgot, in New Mexico, you can register online. So typically when you go in to register old school, you have to put your signature on a piece of paper, right, to verify, give them your ID, hopefully. But if you do it online, 
you don't have to sign anything, right? There isn't an electronic signing. No. I think that's what she said, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's just super corrupt around here, you guys. It is what it is. But we still manage to have some people win Republican seats, especially down here in the South. We're pretty conservative down here in the South. The main thing is, though, is that people don't vote. Republicans don't vote. We have enough Republicans in this county to win most, almost all elections. We do. But see, they intimidate us out of voting because they scare us because, you know, your vote doesn't count. Um, people get intimidated in general. People don't even want, if you're, if you're already a registered Republican, you're already a badass. You're already a, because most people I know won't even register Republican, but they'll vote Republican. But people, most people are scared. So if you've got the balls to even register Republican, just get out there and vote. Dude, you're already halfway. You know, because and I and I give you kudos because most people won't even register Republican. They're scared as hell. Well, and that's a good point. And then it's so easy because if you want to, you don't even have to physically go in there to vote. Get an early ballot mailed to you and mail in your ballot if that's your thing or drop it off, whatever is easier for you. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm so old school. I like to go the day of the election. But I want you to vote because this is really this is so important this year. The two voting blocks that. If they voted, we'd change everything. Or the gun, the NRA members, they just don't. You guys don't vote. You guys love guns. I love it. But you I don't, don't get that you don't at vote all. At all. It's like 80% non-voter turnout. Like something like that. Some stupid number. You guys don't vote. And churchgoers. People who go to church don't vote at all either. So if those, two, if those two voted, churchgoers and gun owners, like NRA members, we would change the country like overnight. It's so ridiculous. And, and what's the reason? I mean, why would you stay away if you were I think it's that intimidation so thing that... Um, they demoralize you like your vote doesn't count. They just, you know, I don't know. People are just disconnected, I guess. But you would think those two blocks would be more motivated to vote than anyone else. The churches, because of the 501c3, they can't talk about certain political things. And I see, I go to, a, I go to different churches all the time. And, you know, it's no secret. I think the churches are a little, they're light. They're light. They need to be a little more harder on the issues. They need to get people more politically involved. But therein lies the problem that if they do start talking politics, they'll lose their tax-free charter. So what do you do? And you have, has anyone actually, has that actually happened to a church? I don't think do so. It's a great question. It's just like a, a threat. In, um, in Phoenix, where I live, there was a little tiny church, and I, I think the priest is still there. The dude's probably in his 90s. That guy was unafraid. I mean, I, I used to go to the Basilica, but my good friend went there. But he was unafraid, and he would tell his congregation, listen, if you are a true Catholic and you really care about the pro-life issue, you know, this is... He would name, I think he would actually name the candidates. Yeah. And, and the dude, you know, he's, he's older, unafraid, but that's how he should be. He's a man of God, and he was doing what he was supposed to be I mean, doing. What are you afraid of, guys? They're going to come after you no matter what. You might as well die on your feet. Than on your, you can die for sure on your knees, bro, for sure. On your feet, you got a fighting chance, and usually you win when you're on your feet. So it's just like people are just straight freaking cowards in a lot of ways. And I'm not talking about the voters, the Republican voters, like the churches. You know, it's like, say something, bro. Mm -hmm. You know? And and I will say, you know, uh, it, I go to St. Genevieve's, and we're blessed to have Father Theo there. You, you talk about him a lot. And Father Theo approaches it so well. He um, will say, you know, do not hate the sinner. He's not about that, but you hate the sin, you know, and talks about that's the tenets of the Catholic Church. And if you don't, if you don't agree with them, then why are you trying to be a Catholic? You know, if you're, if you're not pro-life, if you're okay. When we that's were, cool, really. When we were um, getting the signatures for the referendums, yeah. and we would tell people about you know, abortion here, it's legal, no limits virtually, and there were a lot of people that didn't believe us, and that's why I like doing it. And I, I'm embarrassed to say it's a bummer, but there were a couple of people that I actually talked to, and they're like, oh, no, no, that's, you know, a woman can do whatever she wants to, and uh, they, they wouldn't sign, and I think they kind of got mad at us for being there, I don't know. But I, I'm like, wow, really? You just came out of mass and, and, and you think that? that? Yeah. And, and it wasn't even like, you know, okay, well, I just uh, only up to the first uh, trimester or whatever. I was going to say semester, first trimester. And uh, it, it was amazing to me. I don't get it. We've got some background music going, huh? What's that? What is that? Cool. It's a good bass. Hmm, is that a sign from God? But yeah, that's the thing. We got we to freaking qualify it because it's like people don't know. No limits means that they up to, to the day of birth. They can take out that baby. And in some states, they call it post-birth abortions, you know? So uh, once people learn that, that there's no limits up to the day of, the day is being born, or in some cases what they want is post-birth abortions, they're like, I don't want anything to do with that. So I'm always really open or like willing to tell people what's really going down with that. And they don't believe you. They don't believe that oh, that's believe it. Because it is unbelievable. And well, that's oh, all well, Ferrari. Who you ran against? I remember I oh, after that, that one forum. She's such a ghoul. Oh, that, that never happens. I said, well, "Well, excuse me, 
Representative Ferrari, but if it doesn't happen, then why do we have that law? Why is it necessary to have that? Like, I never got that. And kudos to you because, you know, I was just uh, bragging about you the other day in the forum yeah. when you were debating her because she has been there, what, maybe three terms at she's least? She's on her fourth term now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so she's on her fourth term. And there was a in the weeds question that, like, un unless you had all that experience, you probably couldn't answer. And Zeke, to his credit, he didn't try to BS, you didn't try to BS your way through. You just said, you know what? I don't know enough about that particular topic. It was an I'm going to research wall. and I'll get back to you with an answer on that. It was such yeah. an off the wall question. That was ridiculous. It has to be. So, but yeah, so uh, look, we got a party going on out here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, if you can hear that, that's not us. It's all good. It's all good. It, 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 oh, Zumba? oh, they're doing oh. Zumba? Well, good for them being they're healthy. They're probably getting down there. Yeah, they're probably sweating hard. I don't think it'll p carry over. She can carry over. But um, look, we got a lot of good things going on right now. The Trump trial was postponed to after the election. That was really good that news. That is good. That's freaking good news. Right? And then, so with that. Mm, we got to talk about. Go ahead. I'm what do you want? No, go ahead. Well, I was saying Trump because tomorrow is the debate, right? Oh, the debate. With your girlfriend, Gemala. I love that. I'm more excited for that than like football or anything else. That's going to be great. Let's have a watch party tomorrow. What are we doing? We should have a watch party. Now, I had a friend who texted me and said, oh, they're going to try to trap him. I hope it doesn't fall for traps. And like, I have so much confidence in President Trump. I really do. But they, they have her down. She doesn't cackle anymore. Um, she's taken up all his policies now. Um, and the, the question is, you know, will she reveal... Will she reveal which McDonald's she worked at? That's my question. And is she black or not? You know, one instance she's black, then she's Indian. What are you? She has a different accent everywhere she goes. She's on a different. Oh, will she do a different accent? That's another question. Maybe she's going to come up with a new accent. Yeah. Five has she done something like you know more southwestern and she makes maybe a Mexican dude or something like that? I don't know. And then when she talks to Hispanic, she talks like uh, the South Park hand. Oh. Makes fun the of puppet? The, yeah, the puppet. Like Jennifer Mr. Lopez. Garrison. Talk about okay. this. And she talks so <laughs> silly. But yeah, so she's terrible. She's on definitely a concoction of drugs, probably uh, alcohol and Xanax. Um, yeah, seriously. I am impressed that they were able to stop her cackling. I don't think I've heard her laugh one time since she became the VP, or the VP became the president nomination. Have you? This, no, I haven't. I, I'm good because I can't stand lady. But she, apparently... The poll came out last week that she's up seven points in New Mexico. Kamala Harris. I have a hard time believing that. Do you believe that? that? I have seven a points? real hard time believing that. I mean, that's. Who just, did they poll? Where did the poll come from? I don't know. They didn't tell I don't you. Know. Probably all the freaking dead people that vote here. <laughs> that's who they polled. They polled them. That's because that's always a thing. I just saw something recently. I can't remember if it was Rasmussen, but it was a very uh, reliable. Rasmussen's pollster. good. And they said, what happens when they poll? There's like, it should be about, you know, at least a third or 37% Republicans that vote. And they had it in the 20s. So, yeah. So that's when I see the polls that come out, I always add a few more for Trump because I, I think that that makes it accurate. But it would be nice to have really accurate polls. It would. And we've done a poll locally. We've done a couple polls locally. And it's pretty conservative here, guys. You know, it really is. Like the main thing nobody likes is the LGBTQ being taught to kids. You know, everybody hates that. I mean, they, it's not that, not that they hate LGBTQ. No. I'm cool with gay people. I don't care. I know great gay people. I, I don't know anybody that is all LGBTQ. Some right? of the best conservatives I know are super gay, freaking married. And I have more power to you. It's when they start pushing that stuff on the kids is we got a problem with it. The grooming. The grooming. It's and the grooming. even they have a problem with that. The gay guys and gay girls have a problem with that too. Do we have in New Mexico a gays against groomers group? We should. Chapter? We should. You know what? I met at Turning Point USA last year. I met... Uh, I met uh, these guys, and I need to contact them to see if there's somebody, even maybe just the Southwest, because there were. So one guy had been a transgender and talked about his experience. I think originally he was from England, and the gal who was, I don't remember, she was like the president or the chairwoman, and she happened to be gay. But it's gays against groomers. They were just solid, like this is going to mess up the kids. They were all about the kids, which is what we should be. Yeah, I hope Trump brings that up tomorrow. Because if you're voting for the Democrat Party right now, you're, you're voting to groom children. That's just what it is. And it's all over the education system right now. I get hit up because guys, they know I have a little bit of a reach around here. They know I, I don't put up with stuff and I say something. But people have been hitting me up that are teachers and they're showing me content. They're still teaching these kids nasty stuff on a, on a grand scale. 
Okay, and it's just normalized now. It's so it's so common. It's so it's normalized. So that's what you're voting for. You're voting Democrat, guys. You're voting for your kids to be groomed into, into you know, being uh, sexualized at a very young age, and that's just going to destroy them for, for who knows how long. You know, you shouldn't be getting introduced to sex. If you got someone that's a kid that's like six to nine, like I think Carrie Hanlon said she uh, she's a local senator. She said she had started making out with girls and had sexual feelings when she was nine. That's weird. Huh? Nine? Yo, are you even thinking about that stuff at nine? I didn't hit you know, puberty you're, yet. You're playing outside and doing stuff. Yeah, it was her personal story, you know. And she's gay. She's outspoken about it. That's fine. But I just don't, you know, teaching that to kids is not cool. And that's what the Democratic Party does. The Democrats run this state. Yeah. We have the worst education in the state. And I got teachers hitting me up nonstop. And also Sarah Smith and, Sarah and Juan Smith and Garcia. They, they've been fighting that battle. It's crazy what these kids are introduced to right now. I can't believe it. And that is so criminal that we're last in education. We're like 51st, huh? Yeah, Puerto In education, Rico. the state of New Got Mexico. Us. But man, the emphasis to do all these things, to have the change closets, these laws that we have, the referendums we try to reverse, because you can get in trouble. If you're a nurse and a, a little kid comes to you and wants to be another sex, and they don't want you to tell parents, they can't. They can't because they will get fined, right? Someone, I think Sarah said it could be up to a $5,000 fine for doing that. And again, when you tell the general population who doesn't have time to follow all of these laws, they, they don't believe you. They think that I'm nuts and I'm crazy. So we used to carry the law around. And I tell you, if even if you're watching right now and you don't believe what we're saying, do your own research. Don't believe us because you don't, you know, you may not know us personally. So check it out yourself. Just freaking vote, guys. It helps so much. Vote, become a poll watcher, become a poll challenger. The debate tomorrow, let's make some predictions. Do you think anything? So the main thing, too, I think it's interesting, is you can't have, a, they, they can't have no crowds over there. There's no crowds at the debates. Why? Because they know it would be nothing but Trump supporters in there. Are they going to have any uh, public audience No, no at all? public audience. That's, that's of, interesting, That's the caveat. Isn't it? Yeah, there's no public uh -huh. audience. So it's going to be just like the other debate he had with yeah, Biden. Yeah. Same conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think will work to Trump's advantage, don't you? He runs circles no matter what. These people are just so bad. It's, it's unbelievable. It used to be like who was the most eloquent and articulate public speaker, who had the cleanest background, you know, who was the most successful in life before they ran for office. All that stuff really mattered. Your attractiveness, you know, as, yeah. a, as a person. Where were we at with Biden, dude? What is attractive about that freaking guy? You know what I mean? And then look at, her, look at Kamala. Dick Kerr, she's a terrible public speaker. She's hopped up on Xanax and alcohol all day. And she's probably going to be on ecstasy tomorrow. Wow. Because that's what they do. They have derivatives of ecstasy. It's just amphetamine and hallucinogen to get them going. That's, just, that's what they do. So we got these people literally hopped up on psychedelic drugs to, to get on stage. And we're voting for them? That's counterintuitive to the human condition. We don't pick our leaders like that. We evolved to pick leaders who were the best communicators. That's what it, a real leader is, a, is a, an amazing communicator. And we got these people who have a hard time even, uh, you know, with enunciation, you know. It's got to be rigged. Come on. Now, what I'd like to do, uh, when I used to work at the radio station in Phoenix at KFYI, they would carry the debates. And I like to listen to the debate because it's so interesting. If you're not watching, because you, when you're watching someone, I tend to look at their facial expressions and you're reading that, which is fine. That's great. But it's so different if you're just listening to their words. And I think that you, I, I would do both actually. Because I say it's it's very interesting because you might listen and you hear something that you won't when you're watching that person. And I even think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the last debate when he was debating Biden, you know how they have the split screen? Yeah. And it seems like the network didn't always choose to have the split screen all the time. And you wonder who's making that decision. Okay, I'm going to show him now because he looks goofy. Or... <laughs> Like I'm perfect about that because I'm always making faces. If you, do, I'm not. I shouldn't tell Joey this. If you freeze frame me, you know, I'll come out and I'm making this face. Then I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? I know. Doing? You know. I've taken some pictures of you like that. <laughs> Thank you. On accident. On accident. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's just. It's. Uh, it just I'm very speaks, expressive. Yeah. It speaks to the topsy turviness of this world, and it was like that here too. A lot of our politicians are just not good at public speaking. They're just terrible people overall, but yet people still vote for them. And, you know, that's just what it is in, in this crazy world. Most people are sheeple. You know, you really, we're just designed to just follow the leader, most of us. And that it just, you know. It's easier. You, you, yeah, it's easier. And you realize that that's why only 6% of the British population founded this country. Because there's only a select few amount of people, like everybody here in the studio, who are actually, like, 
alive and awake, and they're not uh, they're real they're real characters. They're not NPCs, non-player characters. Yeah. You, know, you know what those are, right? Non-player. Well, maybe. Sh so for so for video gamers, if you're ever like playing a game, there's like just random like zombies that are just kind of like they kind of do the same thing. They're not really part of the video game. They're just kind of in the way. It's called a non-player character. Oh. They're not actually part of the video game, but they're like a character just there like, as a placeholder. And that's oh. most people that we, that's most people in the world are non-player characters. They're not even really here. I love really... that analogy. I didn't know what it was until you explained it to yeah, me. Yeah, so I, I don't play it. video. A lot know? of people don't know. Yeah. But non-player characters, that's what most people are. They're not conscious. They're not self-aware. They, they don't even know. They're even barely alive. They go to work. They go home every day, and that's it. They're not and, even, you know. And we need to beat up on conservatives that don't engage. We can call them non-player conservatives. That's great. <laughs> and PCs, I right? I like that too. We also need to plug uh, this Thursday, CCIA. That's a cool shirt, by the way. Okay, thank you. So, Coalition of Conservatives in Action, they're having a forum. So, you oh, know, that's typically right. they have a meeting Thursdays at 6 p.m. And Joan, I think Joan is going to be moderating it. Where is it? Where is it? Um, at the church. It's going to be, yeah. New. I need to get. I'll need the to Mountain get Dew Church or something like that. I don't want to. I don't want to give you the wrong information. We'll find out. And we'll find out. But we'll put it in the description on the YouTube. If you live in the Las Cruces area, we invite you to come because we've done them before. Oh, is it at the same church, um, Theus, Mike Theus Church? Remember we had that there last year. I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. Probably. You know what? You weren't able to go to that one. No. I remember because I remember taking a picture of Ryan because Ryan wanted want to say hi to you. Shout out to Ryan Daly, my good buddy. Uh, but yeah, so we'll put all that information. What is it though? What That's are they talking Thursday about? Thursday at 6. They're going to have different, they've invited the candidates, and I, I don't want to say what candidates are coming because I don't have that list in front of me. Oh yeah. But they invite the candidates, and typically it's just a forum, we'll ask questions, and the last time they did it, if you in the audience, if you have a question for someone in particular or all of the panel, you can certainly do that. And then they have their opening statements and their closing statements. It's run pretty well. And then also, I mean, the advantage of that is go a little early and then you can meet the candidates and get to know them, shake their hands, uh, ask them your own question personally if you're too embarrassed to do it in front of somebody else. These things are really important. The Democrats know, never show up. I've been doing this for years, almost seven years now. They never freaking show up. Well, you know, we did have, um, when we did that thing, remember, over at the game, yeah. too, Enrique showed up for that. But he's... And that was he's, he's a new a Democrat. He wasn't even yeah. around really being in politics until he ran for mayor. Like I don't even consider him like part of that crew. Like a your standard yeah. run of the mill, like long term Democrat, they don't show up to nothing. You're right. And full disclosure, the coalition, we don't discriminate. They're all invited. If you're running as independent or a Democrat, we welcome you. We'll invite you dinner. We want you to come. We want you to, <laughs> come. Want you to there show are, up. I think there is going to be food. Yeah, we got food. Right. There Jeez. is going to be food. But yeah, I, I've been doing these a long time. The only time the Democrats show up is when it's like on their platform, like KRWG, at NMSU. That's totally full far lefty. Those guys are super rude and mean to conservatives. I know personally because <laughs> they've they've done it to they you. They treated me like complete ass. Right, and um, you still went. The Jewish Bethel Temple. Never been so disrespected in my entire life. They'll show up to those events all day, you know. Um, but it, anything outside of those, like hard leaning on their side stuff. And yeah, okay, chips and salsa. We're conservative. But we're not going to beat you up. Like we had Peter Goodman on, and right. he's super progressive. We had great conversation, and and I think we got some traction. We found some common ground, and that's really what I'm trying to do with you guys. If you're a Democrat, you want to come. On, we'd love to have you on the show. I just want to find some common ground. That's my goal. I'll tell you what I'm trying to do. There's no underhanded thing. We just want to mm -hmm. find common ground so we can freaking solve the problems in the community. But no, you just want to freaking stay in your freaking Biden basement. Go ahead. Well, and it wasn't. It wasn't that long ago, you know, when I worked at the station at KFYI, we would have the other side. In fact, there was this guy, his name was Christopher Bua, super liberal, super liberal. But when he was in town, he would come and he'd sit down with one of our very conservative talk show hosts and they would have some great discussion. And what you could learn is, you know, how they think and why they think. Exactly. And then they shook hands, kind of like, you know, athletes do or boxers in the ring. Okay, now we're done. So I got him, I have information here. So Thursday's CCIA meeting will not be at Kitchencraft. Uh, they'll be hosting a candidate town hall at Mountain View Christian Church. Oh, okay, that's at 241 Three Crosses. So that's right where um, oh. Maine and 70, 70. If you're old school, it's where the old Burger Time used to be out there by There Allison's. you go. <laughs> I even know that. Yes, he knows that. <laughs> But yeah, so that's from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, anybody's welcome. Come and hang out with us. I'll be there. And yeah, definitely. We'll be there. It should be really well done. And if you know of a candidate maybe that doesn't know about this, let them know and they can contact CCIA. Uh, they can just go to the website or you can let, here, I'm going to give you the email here. Uh, CCIA, 
WinUSA at pm.me. That's a really easy one. C-C-I-A, Win, W-I-N, USA at pm.me. And that way you can get information or maybe you're a candidate like, oh, I'd like to be there. Cool. Come join us. Yeah. That being said, the crime is a problem. Uh, go local really quick. We just had a record-breaking crime spree in Albuquerque. 15 homicides, 17 homicides in 15 days. Wow. Yeah, that broke, breaks a record, I'm sure. A, that's, a rec- that's a record breaker. 17 homicides in 15 days just happened in Albuquerque last week. What was so, it, gang-related, or do they well, know it's probably a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, apparently, there's some Venezuela issues going on in Albuquerque, too, right now. Oh, that's scary. Well, you that's know? close to Colorado when you're getting up there. Yeah. So, you know, getting a good district attorney helps. Getting a good district attorney helps with that. Getting a good city council is the most important thing, really. You know, we got two city council races coming up next year. It's going to be from the High Range area and uh, Las Galinas, Sonoma area, and also going to be the Lynn Middle School, Trevis area. Those are the two districts that are up for city council next year. Is that mine? Is that Koran? Yes. Okay. The one is yours. It's, it's uh, the two Beckys. Oh, that's Becky Coran and the other one, Becky, I don't know her name, Becky something. That's, wow. But they're, they're up. They're, those those uh, city council seats are up. And if we can get uh, a good city council, and we have, we got a good mayor. Yeah, Enriquez is a Democrat. Fine. He's still commonsensical. We've he's, made some headway. He we has. He's, he, he works directly with the police uh, police chief. They've you know done what they could for what they can. He doesn't have a really good city council behind him, though. So we need to get new city council members in there. And if you're thinking about it at all, it's not too late. Start now because that's just that's one year. Just run. Dude. That's it's, a year. It's not that bad. Just I mean, get your name. Start talking to people. Just get a campaign manager. Contact us. Meeting. We yeah. can put you in touch. Come to the CCIA meetings. There's a lot of information you can learn. And volunteer now. now. So that's next year. For now, we just need volunteers like crazy. We actually got one in the studio right now. Came to hang out, check things out. Really appreciate you coming in here, Mr. Huff. It's so crazy because yes. the other Huffs that I know are super technical, and he's a technical Huff too. So it's like. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Any relation? <laughs> None no <at> relation. All. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. So yeah, volunteers are coming up right now. We've got a lot of people hitting us up for uh, district attorney for uh, Michael Camp for district attorney. A lot of amazing people. It's just it's been such an honor and pleasure meeting these people. Want to step up and help their community. So if you guys want to volunteer, you don't have to do it with Michael Kane. Any 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 politician that resonates with you. That's how Mr. Huff here. He saw Mr. Kane talk. He's like, man, I want to help that guy. And that's how it is. That's how I got involved with uh, Yvette Harrell. I saw her talk and I was like, I want to get involved with that chick, that woman, that lady. <laughs> Whatever. She's freaking she awesome. She doesn't mind. She's she doesn't cool mind. She's it. super cool. And I did. I got involved. And shout out because, man, the Michael Caine signs are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. They are awesome. Very uh, well placed. They're beautiful. Of course, he's my candidate, so I'm a little impar- you know, partial to do that. Uh, but he's a great candidate, and I really I really think he has a chance to win. Yeah, we've heard Democrats volunteers. say, you know what? They normally vote Democrat, but they like that sign so much, they're going to vote Republican for him. And what's his line? <laughs> Justice is coming? Yeah, just Yeah, is coming. baby. Well, little tombstone What's throwback. the next event that he's going to have? So we're going to be going. There's a big event. We're having a big car show in Anthony, Texas. Uh, the mayor in Anthony, Texas is just loves Michael Caine. He's a huge fan of him. So he donated the, the biggest park that they got that was basically designed for car shows. So we're having a car show, and we're doing a matanza. So it's a double event. What's a matanza? Matanza is basically a bunch of Mexicans killing a pig and eating together. Oh, mata. I get it. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be delicious. Shame on me. I didn't know that word. <laughs> right. Well, you got to come. Come check it out. Matanza. I've never been to a matanza myself personally, but we got a 300-pound pig um, farmed by Kaiser Farms, the best uh, pig wow. farmer in the state. Delicious stuff. Chicharrones time. Yep. And... You know, we're going to be having a lot is of people Joey cooking? It's going to be huge. Joey, come hang out. we got some pigs for you guys. You guys eat pig? You guys eat pork? Okay, cool. Well, some people don't eat pork. Yeah. That's so coming awesome. out October 5th, car show. And we've got a bunch of other stuff coming out, too. He's got debates coming on. He's going to be coming on TV soon. A lot of exciting, big stuff coming out for the campaign of Michael E. Kane for district attorney. And signs are going up everywhere. i got more signs. If you guys want some yard signs, shoot me out. I got we got, we got got a big order of yard signs in just recently, so we can I can take you some yard signs, too. I do actually need one. need to bring me one. Got you. Yeah. And got you guys, too. You got one. And so should people go to website, Facebook, yeah, for this Michael information? Yeah, uh, michael4da.com. That's michael, the number 4, da.com. You can donate there. You can check out his platform. You can reach out to me as well. Um, I'll be launching his social media this week. We're going to get hyper-aggressive with that. We'll be streaming on several platforms so he can update everybody on just what's going on in the community and around the state and how he would approach things like that. Because people want to know, people hit us up all the time, like how would Michael approach this? Having the insight of an attorney is awesome. So we want to provide that to the community and, and just have a real attorney give you insight on how he would handle the crime or whatever you might have questions about. Did I take a picture of it? I also saw the DAs, it had like the 
15 crime-ridden cities in the whole United States, yeah. and all of them, all of those cities are run by the left, right. and the DAs yep. are left also. 100%. So it tells you how important, this is a very, very important office. The last time we had a Republican district attorney in Doniana County, we were heavily attacking child abusers, which was great, and she became the governor eventually, the Republican governor of New Mexico. That's right. So this, whether Michael, uh, Mr. Kane, he's told me he has no interest in running for governor, but spiritually, if we can get a Republican as the district attorney in Doniana, that will emanate throughout the entire state for sure. It already has. It let already me, has. Let me he's read, not even won yet. Let me read this to you. So it says, the party affiliations of mayors, district attorneys, sheriffs, and city council members within the nation's 15 highest crime rate cities are li largely run by Democrats. And so it had a whole map and everything. You know, it's like St. Louis, Detroit, Cleveland, you know, a lot of uh, cities in the eastern. Interesting it didn't have California, but maybe and what, and what people don't know, I don't know if I've said this on the show before, but like people, everybody like gave us a lot of crap because, oh, the Republican can't win in Doniana. It's like, dude, we already had a Republican this DA well, not too long ago, and she kicked ass. Number two, Democrats for decades have been voting for Republican district attorneys and Republican sheriffs for decades because those are the only two positions that you can really have a direct, immediate impact on crime. And subconsciously, people know that the Republican candidate is going to get it done more than the Democrats. We are not typically soft on crime. So, right. No, we're not particularly soft on crime. So for decades, Democrats have voted for Republican district attorneys and, and Republican sheriffs. We experienced ourselves here in Doniana when we had Susanna Martinez as a Republican freaking district attorney. So there you go. Ready to rock with him. I, I want to give a shout out to a, a person I'm helping campaign is David Tofsted. And he's running for New Mexico Senate District Number 36. Really good candidate. He's running against Jeff Steinborn. He is the pro-life candidate. In addition to that, he is a um, he's very well informed on all the green issues. He's a true conservative, yeah. And I mean, if you if you want to help a candidate also too on that, or just you know you know how you can help too. Just tell people when you're having a conversation and you find out they live in Doniana County or they live in your particular district and you know of a good candidate, mention the name because you as a friend or a person that they can trust, you carry some weight, you carry some credibility. And this is important. This is a super important election. We're getting to the end of the show. Is we there are. anything we haven't covered? Well, no. Okay. We everything. All right. Um, I think that you need to take us out in a special big prayer. We got a big week coming up. Yeah, Let's sure. Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today to spread the message of the community, to be a voice of reason and truth for you, Lord. We pray that you continue to protect us and protect those who are fighting for your message and give us uh, the tools that we need to fight for you and fight for the children and the community, Lord. We are under spiritual attack right now, and we just pray that you spread your love and energy to all of us and our enemies and those who are against you and that they find a place for you in their heart as well, Lord. Again, thank you so much for everything. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Nicely done as always. So thank yeah, you. crazy show, crazy times. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I still get a lot of people hitting me up. I got someone uh, at church yesterday, you know, thank me for doing the show. Uh, they're really grateful for the information that we share and, and they just like what we do. And that, that you know, gives me, it, it makes me happy to be appreciated. It does, because this is not easy. The team, you know, we, we all sacrifice to make this come true. We really, really do. This is not something that like, we're gonna get super rich doing ever or anything. It's just something that we wanna give back to the community. And, and we are. So thank you guys for all your support. It's important. Thanks to Haley. Joey Garza, our production engineers. We appreciate you very much. We appreciate you, Chipsters, for Chips and Salsa Show New Mexico. Shout out to Chips and Salsa Show Arizona. Yeah. And until next time, we love you, New Mexico. Alice Slada here with Zico Rodriguez. Volunteer and vote. Volunteer and vote. Volunteer and vote. What he said. Volunteer and vote. Volunteer and vote. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Later.